One of the biggest concerns in farming is rising input costs. Uh, up until this recent price hike in commodities, uh, we've, we really have not over, over years and years, if you go back uh, 20, 30 years, we have not had a significant rise in commodity prices. There's been blips, but, but generally they've settled in and, and how we've been able to survive is, is really uh, through efficiency and through, through uh, increased yields and, and efficiency of inputs. Uh, on my farm, I noticed uh, one of my major costs was, was equipment. And that's for any farmer, that's a major expense. And uh, with commodity prices having been stagnant and, and equipment prices seeming to go up every year, when I started farming in 2005 full time, you know, a new tractor was $125,000. Well, now that same tractor is three twenty to three hundred forty thousand dollars. So you know we've had double to almost triple increase in, in equipment uh, cost. It's it's turned from from an expense to a major expense. I decided there there had to be a, a better way to do this. Being able to buy these older tractors, restore them, put them back to work, and, and we're doing it for significantly less cost than than what a, a new unit would would cost. Uh, plus, the, a major. Uh, uh, a major thing with them is the, the parts cost. Uh, most of these were built out of uh, big truck parts and, and readily available parts, not proprietary parts like most manufacturers use. So uh, we're able to source our parts from different places than, than dealerships. Uh, and, and really the parts cost is, is minimal, uh, exponentially cheaper compared to uh, going to a dealer and buying parts. So, and, and it's a testament uh, that there are still a lot of these all over the world running. Early, early uh, Steiger tractors are, are still known for, for tough and simple to work on and, and good tractors. We're talking older than me or as old as me and that's what that's how tough they were built though uh, and I've always been into old cars and and like projects and so this is a uh, it's been a little bit of a hobby for me I've been able to to satisfy that itch of of kind of old things and, and, and learning new things and figuring things out uh, on this uh, on this old equipment uh, but it makes me money. From day one, when we got these tractors, we've actually been running them. And, and I say we've put approximately 2,000 hours on each tractor. They, they get used more than any tractors on my farm because in the spring and fall, we're doing tillage with them. And then all summer, we move dirt with them. So, uh, but, but my cost on these, I, I know my cost because the, the beauty of these tractors is, is like I mentioned, the transmission's $5,000. Well, the, the drop box is $5,000. The, the, the axle's less than $5,000, so I know that no matter what happens, no matter what major breakdown I have, there's not going to be a twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar breakdown. I can replace any major component on this tractor behind me for approximately five thousand dollars or less, including the engine. Um, so, the golden era for tractors, as far as I'm concerned, it was before design obsolescence came in was even a word. They weren't designing a part to fail at a certain time. They were making, they were building things as tough as possible and wanted them to be cheap to work on. They wanted to use common components that big trucking, mining industries, uh, so you could get the parts if, if a dealer wasn't close. I, I plan to restore hopefully one a year uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, I've got uh, very good employees. I've got a couple of South African gentlemen who, who were mechanics in South Africa and, and like messing with these and are very good. So. Uh, that's where we're, we're able to go in and I, I've really gotten to a point where it's cheaper for me to have one to two people full time to start restoring these uh, than, than make equipment payments. So 